All right, guys, today I'm going to teach you how to smoke a pipe. Tobacco pipe, not a weed pipe, you animals, or a flower pipe, or herb pipe, whatever you kids are calling it these days. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that your pipe is clean and ready to smoke out of, because you don't want to be smoking the last bowl that you smoked. So you got a little bit of ash in here, so I'll teach you how to clean it really quick, just to make sure that you're having a nice smoke. You're gonna want a pipe cleaner. And I always hold my stem so that the mouthpiece faces down. You see that? That's the mouthpiece. That's where you put your mouth when you smoke out of your pipe. And then feed the pipe cleaner up through there. This might take a little bit, and depending on the ring gauge of your stem, the interior diameter, to use a couple of big words, um, might be a little snug. You might accidentally bend the pipe cleaner, but you know what, that's okay, because pipe cleaners are not expensive, and you can always use another one. Unless you're almost out, then you should come down here and you should buy some more. We've got that pipe cleaner all the way through the stem, and then I like to grab that end, twist and pull. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. But the big thing is you don't want to pull the pipe cleaner back out through the mouthpiece because then you'll pull any residual oils or anything that are inside of the stem to the mouthpiece and then you'll taste all of those flavors when you, uh, when you smoke out of your pipe. Now, you should clean your pipe after every smoke. Yeah, you should let it rest for at least a few minutes after you smoke so that you can effectively clean the pipe without damaging it. Um, but generally, you want to clean it after every smoke so that it's clean before you smoke. But because I'm a bad piper, um, I didn't clean my pipe last time I finished smoking it, which is a big no-no. Don't do that. Don't be like me. Be better than me because you are better than me and I believe in you. All right, so next we'll move on to the pipe. You can use the same pipe cleaner for this part. You're gonna go ahead and move into the part of the pipe that the stem inserts into. And you're gonna to wanna to pull any of, the, any of the tars that are left over in the bottom of the pipe out there. Gosh, this pipe is... I'm actually really upset with myself that I didn't clean this because this is one of my favorite pipes. All right, and then last, I like to fold the pipe cleaner and just ring it around the inside of the bowl. That helps knock over, knock out any ash but, as you can see, that is a big improvement. I no longer have all of that little ash ring on the inside of the pipe. I know that it's clean. We're gonna go ahead and put it back together. Um, fun little note, as a guy that sells pipes and I see people handle the pipes in our cabinets and handle their own pipes all the time, um, I do very, very, very strongly recommend and urge you, when you put your pipe together or you take it apart, treat the stem as though it's threaded. Uh, it is one of those things that will help prevent unnecessary stress on the stem of your pipe because these guys are designed to be a really snug fit and if you twist it back and forth then that can really stress out the materials that the stem are made of and cause it to crack and break and then you have a pipe that you can't smoke out of. Uh, also if your if your stem does not fit snug so does not fit snugly enough that it's easy for you to just pull your pipe apart, then generally uh, that is a sign of wear, though there are some pipes that are designed like that, like Peterson has their system pipes, that, that is a specific function of the design of the pipe, is so that it's very easy to take apart and put back together. Uh, it's, a, it's got some, some fun elements in military history that we'll maybe talk about in another video. Next, now that we've got the pipe clean, we want to grab some tobacco to smoke out of it. This is, oh gosh, that's, that you can't get to the tobacco there. Woo, oh my gosh. Ah, give that a whiff. Now that I just dumped some of that on the floor like a wasteful animal. Sorry, Paul. All right. Go ahead and start by taking a pinch and just 
crumbling it down in there. But we're going to repeat this until there we go. We've got a full bowl of tobacco, right? Whoop. I'm going to pack that down in there until it's just below the halfway point. So now, if, can, you, can you see it in the light there? You can see that that tobacco compressed pretty much all the way down to the halfway point in the bowl. Um, this is called the first pack, it's a loose pack. I'm using the three pack method for this video because this is the kind of most universally agreed upon method, especially for beginning pipers to pack and smoke a bowl. And then we'll go on to our second pack, that's the same exact process. Pinch, crumble, there we go, we'll take just a little bit more, there we go. Look at that, it looks, looks full again, but it's not. I'm gonna pack that about half again. So now we're gonna be about three quarters of the way up the bowl. This is gonna be a slightly tighter pack than that first pack. I always recommend doing this by hand. Um, I've seen guys pack their bowls using these pipe tools. And these pipe tools are absolutely fantastic for tamping your bowl when it's lit. But I always recommend, especially when you're getting into smoking a pipe, packing your bowl by hand because then you can feel the resistance of the tobacco in the bowl and you kind of start to understand where uh, where mistakes in the pack are when you have a pack that's too tight or too loose and you're having issues maintaining your smoke. And guess what, it's the third pack now. This is gonna be the tightest pack and holy moly, it's the exact same thing. My gosh. And Boom, there we go. So this, this pipe has a really, really deep bowl on it. So I used a lot of tobacco, but there you go. You got this nice, nice tight pack at the top. It's all flat, good, ready to smoke. So we'll cap that, put it off to the side. And this is the fun part. We actually get to light it and smoke it. Uh, we've got some of our trusty matches. strike. Let the flame burn off the match head there because we don't want to smoke the taste of sulfur in our bowl. Generally, I recommend if you don't want to use a match, a strip of cedar or a butane light uh, fuel source. So you see with that first light, we toasted all of that tobacco on top, charred it, burn it, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, but the thing is, is with this, this loose leaf style of tobacco, this ribbon cut, uh, the tobacco expanded after we hit it with the flame. So now, for the first time in this process, we're going to take the tamper, we're going to pack that back down, not any tighter than it was when we first packed it but just enough to give us a nice flat surface again. So you see the difference. And then we'll go ahead, strike another match. And we've got a nice even light all the way across the surface. Now, you're gonna have to tamp it a couple of times throughout the rest of the bowl, um, unless you just have the incredible, most incredible beginner's luck, or if you're an expert and you've been doing this forever and you know exactly how to pack and smoke a bowl. But the most important thing is that you enjoy the smoke. So the tobacco that we're using in this how-to pipe video is the uh, Sillum's Linea Epoch Antique. This stuff came to us as a reference from a good friend of ours and client. His name is Travis. He's a really sharp guy. And he recommended this stuff because he really, really likes that as far as aromatic pipe tobaccos go, uh, 
it has a, a very natural tobacco topping feel to it. So the flavor profile of that, I definitely get a lot of plum, a little bit of spice, and some hints of chocolate. Um, it's not anything that I would say is, is a typical characteristic of an aromatic pipe tobacco because I've had a lot of aromatic pipe tobaccos where they're, they're generally exceedingly sweet. Uh, this blend gives all of those flavor profile elements without being exceedingly sweet. I mean, the, the, the plum in there It's a very round and warm flavor profile. And the presence of the chocolate is, it's an accent uh, more than anything. Well, the uh, spices in there, they just kind of tie the two flavors together. So yeah, overall I would, I would say that's a very good tobacco. Cheers, guys.